The year that we started offering advice virtually was the year that our practice really took off. And not surprisingly, the year that we learned how to add virtual to our practice was in 2020. Now, the problem that we faced is when we were all forced to go virtual in May of 2020 or, or uh, March of 2020, we tried to do everything the exact same way we were doing it as before, but that didn't work. So we had to change a few things before we really saw this success happen. So I want to share what we did in this video so that hopefully you can see the same results or the same success if you're either doing virtual now or thinking about adding it as part of the practice, you know, having some in-meeting, in-person uh, meetings, and then also having virtual. This is actually going to be helpful whether you want to be a virtual advisor or not. And if you only want to be your local area advisor and not be, you know, multi-state or, or, or national, you can still take advantage of adopting some of these tools that we're going to go over because there's times where your clients or your prospects they might be busy right or you might be busy and your client it might be more helpful if you can just do a call via zoom right versus them driving to your office or versus you spending 60 minutes in the car to get to their home so in this video i'm going to share some of the benefits that i didn't realize would come from uh, starting and really adding this virtual advice to our, our business and then some of the tools that we needed to do it right. And then the biggest piece here is some of the communication strategies or changes that we needed to, to make to increase our value virtually. This part, the, the communication part that I'm gonna share is I'm guessing it's gonna be the most valuable thing that you hear all month. But uh, I'd say I'm pretty confident in that, but you tell me. And if this is your first time here, I'm Dave and I own Streamline. It's an advisory firm that's been growing rapidly the last few years. And we created this channel to really share what we're doing to achieve that success so that you can do it too, hopefully. Now, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you find this video helpful. And then look for the private email tips below I send out each week to advisors. And really the goal there is just a, a five-minute read or video that will help you do something and improve your practice a little bit that week. So now let's get to the benefits of adding virtual to our business. And first is the obvious ones. It's less meeting prep that was needed for existing clients. Now in the past, when we had face-to-face -face meetings, we spent a lot more time prepping to just make sure that we could cover anything and everything that really came up or might be on the client's minds. We wanted to be prepared because we're only together for an hour or so or more, and we just wanted to be prepared so we don't waste the time and we know everything that they might ask. I don't know if you've ever felt that way before, but that's how we felt. But after adding virtual, if something came up that we weren't prepped for, or maybe we intentionally didn't prep for, let's say, for example, if you're doing an investment review with a client and then they bring up a major life change you didn't know about, and, uh, and they want to see their updated income plan rather than sitting there and either finding out ahead of time or sitting there in the meeting and prepping and, and trying to get this so we could show them the example. We'd say, that's great. Let's take this info. Let's get it back. We'll update, uh, update the plan at the office. And then we can have a, a Zoom meeting in a week or, or two weeks, whatever works for you, and then review the plan. Does that sound okay? So we're still giving them what they need but we just have a little bit more time to prepare and look at all the details and make sure it's right versus being put on the spot to make the update right there in the meeting. And it also allows us to have that second meeting be a shorter 20 minute meeting because we're just focused on one thing. And because it's so easy to have the virtual meeting, as you already know, it could be shorter and you don't feel like you have to invest that much time to make it worth it for them. Another benefit was just the saving time uh, for us and for our clients. Because in the previous example, that would, uh, that would have been two commutes most likely, and each way was about 30 to 45 minutes. So the amount of time saved just for that one meeting, if we could make it virtual, was a lot of time, either for them or for us. And the other time-saving thing was that those meetings uh, before we were virtual with that particular client were sometimes two hours, sometimes even three hours because we we're jam-packing everything into this meeting. But the meetings, when they're virtual, they got shorter. They turned into about 45 to one hour at the most. And that's the on the long end. And since we didn't have to travel and meet face to face, there's no underlying feeling of making sure that we get the most uh, time possible together to make it worth it. Now, one important note here, I'm not suggesting that you go 100% virtual with clients right away. You know, we, we have to, a face-to-face -face connection is still much, much better than a, a virtual connection if you can do it. So just be aware of your client's needs. You know, if they're local, um, make sure that maybe you're doing, if you're doing two meetings a year, maybe you're going one virtual and then one face-to-face. -face. So just be, you know your client better than I do. So just make sure you know what they really need. A few other benefits, and then I'll get to the tools and the tech and then the communication 
tips uh, if going virtual. And the biggest benefit uh, to introducing virtual for us was that it allowed us to focus on just one type of prospect moving forward. So uh, as we niche down, it seemed like you, you, the, the number of people gets smaller, but when you go virtual, the number of people that uh, are your potential client actually grew for us by 100x. And that's just, I'm making that number up because Chicagoland has about 3 million people. And now that we were able to go virtual and then start content marketing, we we're able to reach really the entire US population who needs this one particular piece of help related to retirement planning. And the important thing here is to reach, to go nationwide, we needed a simple content marketing strategy. And there's a lot that I wanna share about that. And I do on this channel. So just be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss those videos or go into the library here in YouTube and look at the videos about content marketing and, and what we were able to do to, to really accelerate the growth of our practice the last few years. Another benefit is when clients, if they're local and they retire and then they move south or go somewhere warm, maybe for half the year, uh, that's common for us in Illinois. You know, it's normal for someone to retire then go to Florida or Arizona or somewhere like that. And they would always ask, is it a problem if we retire and move to a different state. Now that we've got all the systems and all the tech, then we know it's definitely not. And we just tell them we've got clients in a bunch of different states all over the country. So it's easy, it's easier transition for them and they feel a lot more comfortable with continuing to work together. And the other big benefit was since 2020, obviously that just forced everybody to go virtual. If you wanted to have, if you wanted to see your grandkids or your family and other relationships, you had to get um, on Zoom and, and whatnot. So everybody is comfortable with it now. And that just made it so much easier for our firm to transition to virtual as well. So now let's get on to the tech needed. And then some of it you're using right now, and then some of it you're probably not. So the things that you're using are probably the video, like Zoom meetings, Microsoft Teams, or, or Google Meet, or the, the other ones out there. Uh, but what you might not be doing is learning how to make it feel like you're in the same room with the person that you're talking to through the screen. And the best way we've been able to do that, there's a few ways, but the best way is, this is getting into some of the communication strategy now, is we started using iPads to draw during the meetings. So if I could pull this up here, and let me just reposition it here for you. So rather than showing our screen during meetings and looking at uh, their accounts or a slideshow on the screen, we would download the PDF of, uh, of the slideshow that we'd create, and then we'd upload it to Notability. So this app here is Notability, and that allows us to then have the slides and then have the drawings happen throughout the meeting. And having that ability to make notes live on the during the meeting and look at it together with the client and draw pictures on the screen as well to explain things, it makes a huge difference. And you probably heard me repeat that Simon Bowen quote that when you draw, on the screen, you actually draw people in, right? It seems like you're a lot closer than you actually are. And Zoom makes it super easy for you to do this because it's uh, it's got a button that just says, click to share your iPad screen or whatever your drawing um, utensil is, and you could do it very simply. And drawing is also an essential part of our first and second meeting. So this is with prospective clients. If you haven't joined the advisor value formula yet, then email me because I share a few drawings um, Actually, some of them, if you're you're a part of it, you you already know about the either the three circles drawing, and then also there's another um, different when you're trying to explain your value as an advisor. So those are essential when we're doing these meetings with prospective clients. Then the next tech is a calendar scheduling tool. Maybe you're using Calendly or other ones out there, but that is just nice because it makes it easy for your client to find the time that fits best for them and their schedule. This has saved me and our team tons and tons of time. And it also gives automatic reminders for the upcoming meetings. So that was a huge time saver for, for our team and just making sure our clients were ready and prepared for the, the meeting that's to come. Uh, the next tech is um, just a secure cloud-based storage like Box or Drive or uh, Microsoft OneDrive, I think it's called. Just having the data there quickly versus paper, it's just an essential piece of, of virtual advice. Now, on to a few more communication improvements that are needed. This is some of the most valuable stuff of the video right here. Because have you heard that it takes 8 to 11 touch points for someone to feel comfortable enough to do business together? I believe that's true, but we can actually automate some of those touch points in the first and second meeting process with our prospective clients. Because once the intro call is set and scheduled, then this automating tool, the automated tool like Calendly, that can actually send a video of you or a written email giving the prospect an idea of what to expect 
during the call, or maybe how to prepare, or a couple things to look at, or introduce the next few steps of your process. Then after the meeting, they can receive an automated update, a video or an email introducing your team and what everybody does, and then showing the office or, or something like that, which can really boost your credibility. So the idea here is you record the video or write the email one time, and then it happens dozens of times automatically for all future prospective clients. Now the next communication strategy is a big one, and that is when you're doing virtual meetings, it's very important to increase the amount of mirroring you do. Since we're not in person, there's a lot of nonverbal communication that's lost when it's just um, a face on a screen, right? There's a, a lot of things that are lost when you're not um, in the same room together. So mirroring more is important. So repeating back important things that they said is very important. And then improving your tonality to match theirs. There's an easy way to do this, to, and, and that's to change your face when you're listening to someone. If they're talking about something that's serious, then you don't wanna have just a blank stare looking at them. You try to match their face and their emotions because your face is the remote control that actually changes the way your voice sounds and changes your tonality. So that's a big one. And then here's the really, really, if you get one thing, this is the big one. If you get one thing from this video, make it this. The goal here, the communication goal, whether it's virtual or in person is connecting the value you provide with their goals and then with their values. So let me explain, let me give you an example. One of the things, take one of the things we do, which is tax loss harvesting. So when we go over the strategy, we need to remember to match it with the words they use. So that's the mirroring, writing down the exact quotes they used. And they said, they don't wanna pay more tax than they have to. That was an exact quote that they said. And then they also said they wanna use their money and share it with their family and causes that they care about. That was one of their values that they cared. So. After we talk about tax loss harvesting and how we do it, we'll say, so that tax loss harvesting strategy that we look at and implement throughout the year, that's really a key part to, and then we scroll up to their one page plan and show the quote of not paying more tax than you have to, and we underline it. So that you have more time to spend with your family and more time to spend with those causes and more to give to those causes that you wanna make a positive impact on. So it goes from a boring, tax loss harvest strategy to the goals that they want and then to the values they care about the most. That's the magical communication piece right there. Was that useful? I think it is. I hope you, you see it. If it is, like this video and then share it with an advisor or friend and then check out these videos for more helpful tips. Take care.